having Thanksgiving over at my parents' house today, and I am bringing this dish. I call it potato pie. It's a plant-based version of shepherd's pie. These are all the ingredients that I'll be using today. It may look a bit tedious, but I am making uh, two pans worth, so it'll be partially my food prep for the week in addition to um, what I'm bringing to my parents' house. Um, so this makes quite a bit of food. It'll fill up this pan to the brim, kind of pushing the limit. And um, it doesn't have any added oil. Um, it's pretty low calorie. And it's one of my favorite dishes. So it, once you've made this a few times, it's not very tedious at all. Um, the hardest part is just peeling all these potatoes. But once you know what you're putting in it, I don't measure anything. Uh, at least the things that don't have calories or have very few calories. Um, I do measure obviously all the calories in these bags, but I use the whole bag so it's easy for me to figure out the nutrition facts on it. Um, so let's get started. All right, so you're gonna peel your potatoes and then you're gonna cut them into manageable sizes like this so that they boil faster. And then I'm just going to dump them in this big pot to boil. Once you get your potatoes into the pot, you're going to let them boil and get soft. Um, it's going to take quite a while. And I always add a little salt and I put a lid on it just to help it heat faster. And then we're going to start putting the other ingredients together. While the potatoes are boiling, I start to cook the onions. And then I add some seasonings. I'm going to use some thyme, a very generous amount. And a little bit of salt. Once the onions are simmering and they start to turn translucent, I add chopped mushrooms. This is about 15 to 16 ounces of chopped mushrooms. And as you can see, it's already taking up quite a bit of the pan but they shrink down quite a bit. So I'll let those cook for a little bit before I add my other ingredients. All right, make sure you're stirring your mushrooms around regularly so that they cook down pretty good. Once they've shrunk a little bit, that's when you can start adding your other ingredients. And I'm definitely gonna be pushing the limits of how much can fit in this pan which might not be the smartest thing, but that's how I roll. So I'm gonna add an entire bag of this beefless ground. Um, I usually use Gardein, but I do occasionally use Boca if I can't find Gardein. They're both about the same. I think if anything, uh, the Boca might be less calories because it's got a little bit less in a bag. So I'll start mixing those together. And if you find that it's getting too dry, just add a little bit of water because you don't want to burn it, obviously. And that might happen for you a few times. So I'm going to add the rest of these ingredients. The main thing we're going to use is this liquid aminos. It's a soy sauce alternative. You might be able to use soy sauce instead of this. I haven't tried it that way. But you're going to use a generous amount. I never measure things. If I had to guess, I would say it's about half a cup, maybe, but yeah, be very generous with it. The next thing I use is a little bit of this liquid smoke, probably about a half tablespoon to a tablespoon, and then I add a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm going to stir everything up together really well. Now I'm going to add two whole bags of peas and carrots. Um, these are 12 ounce bags, so 24 ounces of peas and carrots. Oh, I almost forgot. Probably before, should have done this before the peas and carrots. I add about a tablespoon of this Better Than Bouillon seasoned vegetable base. Um, if you don't have this, you can also use any type of uh, vegetable broth would work. It just really helps the flavor quite a bit. So I usually do that before the peas and carrots, but it's not going to matter. 
it doesn't really matter. I do, however, do the peas and carrots last because they will cook pretty quick. And then just stir everything. All right, and then I add a little less than half a cup of cornstarch mixed with water. It's about probably two teaspoons of cornstarch. That'll help just thicken it up for whenever I put it in the pan. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna mix everything up and just let it cook for a little bit longer. By the time you get to this point, your potatoes are probably almost finished. I am gonna just add a little, or not a little, but quite a bit more time just to make sure I got plenty of seasoning in there. So I just added a little bit of pepper and just a little bit more salt. And I'm just gonna mix that around. All right, so it looks like I lost a little bit of video there, but it was a pretty simple thing. So um, after I strain the potatoes, I just start mixing them up and I used one cup of unsweetened almond milk and just mixed it in to basically make uh, mashed potatoes. That's basically what you're doing. So once you get the nice smooth mashed potato consistency, you are good with your potatoes. All right, so the potatoes are done and the filling is done. So we're gonna start assembling our potato pie. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start dumping filling in. And then I'm just going to spread it out in the pans. Alright, I am using a paper towel just to soak up a little bit of the extra water that's in here, um, just because you do want it to thicken up pretty well to where you can cut it. So that's just what I'm doing. Usually I don't have to do that, I must have just put a little bit more than I usually do. As you can see, I have everything smashed down into a nice even layer. I've kind of firmly pressed down. Now I'm going to come back with my potatoes and I'm just going to put a layer over the top. You're going to take the potatoes and you're going to smooth them across the top in a nice uh, even layer and it's you know kind of like icing a cake. Once you have it all smoothed out it should look like this. You're just going to bake it for approximately 30 minutes at 400 degrees in the oven. So about 30 minutes have passed and I've taken the potato pie out of the oven and this is just what it's going to look like whenever it's finished. And of course there are two um, pans of this. I just haven't taken the other one out yet. And this will make 14 servings. So thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications for any time I post a video. Thank you.